the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie. Oh, 
us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Nathan said to the David, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king of Israel. I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your Lord's house and your Lord's wives for your own. I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were not enough, I could count up for you still more. Why have you spurned the Lord and done evil in his sight? You have cut down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and you took his wife as your own, and you killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan answered David, The Lord on his part has forgiven your sin. You shall not die. The word of the Lord. Transgression is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. Acknowledged my sin, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you have forgiven the guilt of my sin. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. You are a 
hiding place for me. You keep me safe from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. Rejoice in the Lord. Exalt you just. Bring out your joy, all you upright of heart. Lord, forgive the wrong I have done. The second reading of the morning is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, we who know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. For through the law, I died to the law, that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. No longer I, but Christ lives in me. Insofar as I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself up for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The word of the Lord. According to Luke, glory to you, O Lord. A Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, 
and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at the table of the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days' wages, and the other owed 50. Since they were both unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, The one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, You have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet. But she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with a kiss. You did not wipe them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven because she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The others at the table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Afterward, he journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I must admit, and somewhat embarrassed to admit, but every time I hear this gospel or read this gospel, it kind of goes through my head, you know, I think this would make a really funny Saturday Night Live skit. Because I could just see them really hamming it up with the woman weeping and, and bathing Jesus with her tears. And being a sinner, I'm sure they would portray her as a kind of a wild woman with long hair and kind of flinging it around and wiping it all over the place. But the story is very, very powerful for many reasons. One, Jesus puts Simon in his place for being judgmental. He says, look, Simon, you didn't welcome me and anoint my feet. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but she did. Secondly, he forgives the woman's sins, which Luke tells us are many. And this reading also really underscores deeply what Paul is saying in the second reading that it takes faith as well as good works to be saved. The woman did the works of anointing Jesus and bathing him. But most importantly, as Jesus says to her, your faith has saved you. So not just the works she did, but it was both her faith and the kind deeds that she did. But still, just the image of the whole thing, I could see a pretty funny skit being out of it. Some people, myself and, and older, may remember years ago uh, on Saturday Night Live there was a character called The Church Lady, where Dana Carvey portrayed a, a very self-righteous woman who was always blaming everything on Satan. A couple of weeks ago, a reprise, Dana Carvey came back and The Church Lady made a reprise and interviewed uh, Donald Trump and Hillary, and it was pretty funny. But I've been told over the years that I look like the church lady and can do a pretty good imitation. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or not, but that, be that as it may. But one of the reasons that particular skit was canceled is that a lot of church people complained 
that it portrayed church people in a bad light, as being judgmental and self-righteous. And to some extent, it truly was. And while I do occasionally watch Saturday Night Live, they, like so many entertainers, do not always portray the church in the best of ways. Sometimes, Bo, I think we all need to be able to not take ourselves so seriously and laugh at ourselves. But other times, I think society can go too far in restricting religious expression. Last year, a high school valedictorian in South Carolina recited the Lord's Prayer at the end of his valedictorian speech, and his fellow classmates cheered him on. But he got in trouble by the school, and a lot of the media that reported it accused him of cramming religion down people's throats and not respecting the freedom of religion. But that freedom should go both ways in reality. But there is a danger, and we've seen it on the part of church people, whether that's church leaders or people out in the pews, to become self-righteous and begin to think that, that they are above suspicion. And that is what some church leaders did over the last few decades and centuries, and we know that has not served us well, nor will it ever. But time and time again, Jesus reminds us, hey, you guys, you've got to look in the mirror and look at our own sins. Certainly, in this story, the woman whose sins were forgiven, much to the horror of other people around, was an example. Because Jesus reminds them very clearly to the one who forgives little, loves little. It is hard to love if we cannot forgive. But the question that I think we all need to be thinking about, and to be quite honest, I'm not even really sure what the right answer is, is how should we challenge and correct those who have sinned but in a way that is not judgmental, self-righteous, or makes it seem like that we don't sin and are better than everyone else. Because it is far easier, like I said last week, to look at other people's sins rather than our own. And frankly, it's, it's a lot more fun. Judging people is easy to do. We all see those people around town holding those signs that saying, need help, we'll work for food. And there's times when I see them and truly feel badly for them, especially when it's a hot day or a cold day or maybe it's raining. But then sometimes, on the other hand, there's times I think to myself, you know, if you'd put as much energy into just getting any kind of a job as standing out here, you could be employed. But I know that that is terribly wrong on my part because I have no idea what that person has gone through in their lives. And so recently, I have tried to stop I mean, I've tried to stop and help people again. But everybody sins. And while granted, some sins are worse than others, that is not our job to decide. That's God's job. And that's what he was trying to tell Simon and the others at the dinner. Even though the woman had sinned, she had a strong faith. If we were not sinners, we wouldn't need any of this. We wouldn't need church. We wouldn't need sacraments. We wouldn't need the Eucharist. We wouldn't need it because we'd be perfect, and we'd be God, and, and we're not, and we never will be. But the problem for most of us is allowing ourselves to admit that we have sinned. We, we just don't like to do that. We don't like to admit that we've made mistakes. So many times when I have to mediate an argument, either one between other people or maybe one I've been in, it seems like it's always all the other person's fault, when in reality, you know, it takes two to tango, as they say. But here again, it is a lot easier to see all the mistakes another party made rather than our own mistakes. Someone told me recently that they really enjoy holding on to a good grudge. And I said, well, when I've done it, it doesn't do any good. It gives you stomach aches and headaches and all sorts of things like that. Last week at Vacation Bible School, I had a child tell me right in front of their parent that his mom had told him that Jesus put a special addendum to the third commandment, that if it's summertime, you don't have to keep the third commandment or keep holy the Sabbath. Well, the commandment is still in effect even in summer. So in that case, not only was the Sabbath not kept, but I'm thinking there might have been some false witness bared um, along the ways, too. And I'm sure that kid got into trouble uh, when he got home for blabbing. But Jesus loves us so much that whenever we come to him and have faith that our sins will be forgiven through confession 
they are forgiven. We don't have to worry about it. We still haven't answered the question, though, how do we challenge and correct others in a way that conveys the message of mercy and the gospel? Well, I really believe the best way is like the woman did, by service and humility. We guide by example. In the way we live our lives, admit our own mistakes, and ask for God's help and forgiveness. When people see that, it can and will be a powerful witness. Because certainly while words are important, we all know that oftentimes actions speak louder than words. And so Jesus can, does, forgive our sins and the sins of others. But the question is, can we forgive others and at times even forgive ourselves? At this point, I, I have to make uh, an important announcement. I have to do it now because so many people leave after communion, but I'm not judging. I am not judging. Um, but we all know who makes us leave after communion. I think that would be Satan who causes us to leave after communion. But be that as it may, we've all complained over the last few years about the condition of the roads out here because they're, they're bad. We know that. Well, they, Oklahoma City fixed the part a little bit further down. But now, starting tomorrow, uh, Nichols Hills is going to fix this part right out here. And they're going to do one side of the street at a time. So what that means is that will affect the parking spots right out here. And you will still be able, while they're working on the north side of the road, to come uh, down Elmhurst going eastbound, and everything out in the front stays the same. Um, and you can still get into the school parking lot or the parking lot behind us from the, the far side of the school parking lot or over on Greystone. And so we will move the, the handicapped spots to the small little parking lot right behind the church here, which will still be just a, a short a wheelchair ride or just a few short steps uh, into this door right here. It's really the best we can do. Yes, it will be inconvenient, but you know, we've all wanted this done, and once it's finished, it will, be, it will be great. Once they finish this north side, then they'll start on the south side. But we'll always be able to get into the school parking lot. And so they say it's going to be four to six weeks. Mr. Optimist here says four to six months. So um, let's pray that I'm wrong and they're right. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we who have been forgiven of much may love God and neighbor with grateful hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for freedom from sin, that all who are entrapped by sin may be freed by the experience of forgiveness and live their lives in loving service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from self-righteousness, that we may see others as children of God and let go of judgments based on appearances or rumor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who have been wounded by adultery, that they may know the healing word of Jesus and be able to love and trust again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are searching for work, that God will open new doorways for them and help them recognize opportunities as they are presented. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, that we may be instruments of God's forgiveness and mercy to all who are burdened by brokenness, alienation, and sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all who have died, especially John Gavula, Mary Dibble, Red Keenan, and all of those killed last night in the shooting in the Orlando nightclub, that they may hear the voice of Jesus awakening them to the fullness of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray this to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your love and your mercy. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. days of my life. 
Godhead here in hiding, whom I do adore. Masked by these bare shadows, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at thy service, lo, lies here a heart. Lost, all oh, lost in wonder at the God thou art. Touching, tasting, are in thee deceived. How says trusty hearing that shall be believed? What God's Son has told me, take for truth I do. Trust himself speaks truly, or there's nothing true. On the cross thy Godhead made no sign to man. Here thy very manhood steals from human can. Both are my confession, both are my belief. And I pray the prayer of the dying. I plainly call thee, Lord, and God as he. This faith is day deeper, be my holding of. Daily make me harder, hope and dearer love. O thou our reminder of the crucified, Receive. 
Notice two us missionaries, which are uh, college students uh, who go around giving uh, retreats uh, to young people. They will be here at the end of June for a program in our parish for our youth. There is information in the bulletin about Totus to us and how to register your kids for the programs. We're also looking for host families to house the missionaries and volunteers to provide their meals. Please call the parish office if you can help. This weekend, the Knights of Columbus are having their annual Tootsie Roll weekend. Uh, be sure to get a Tootsie Roll, and then if you'd like, make an opportunity to donate uh, to the Center of Family Love out in Okarchi. Our monthly Lunch and Learn will be this Tuesday at 11.30, and there's more details in the bulletin. Please be sure to RSVP to buy tomorrow uh, for the painting party, which will be on Friday. In this weekend, in the pews, at the ends of the pews this weekend, we have these little prayer cards, um, and they are to, and there's also an insert in the bulletin this weekend on prayer and the importance of prayer and to develop a relationship with God. We always need to talk to Him as we would any friend, and so prayer is how we do it. And so we'd invite you to please take one of these cards um, because they are uh, helps uh, to help us to all be better prayers. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.